portion of Fame Games, where we're talking about indie insider information with the theme a professional is someone who can do his best work when he doesn't feel like it. Because it's our 100th episode of Fame Games, we decided to bring on a special guest. And believe me when I tell you that I'm over the moon that this man agreed to join us today. With accolades that span the width and breadth of the internet, Derek Sivers is a force behind the huge success that independent artists are enjoying worldwide. It says in an interview with puremusic.com, the vision and the accomplishments to date and to come from CD Baby all begin with the founder, a person who relentlessly adheres to his original blueprint of a company operating the musician in mind. Derek, welcome to Fame Games and thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining us. I'm looking at your picture right now and um, I have to admit, you look a little bit like a Buddhist monk and, <laughs> <laughs> and your uh, people at CD Baby kind of look like the cast from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> That's a good description. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are wild and crazy over there. Is that any way to, to, to build a company? Well, it's, it's a bunch of musicians. It's funny. Every time we're hiring, even just for a, a job in the warehouse, whenever we put out an ad, we say, musicians want it for warehouse job or musicians want it for customer service. So... You guys ever get together and jam? Put out like a all the time. Yeah, you should. all the time. We've got this big, huge warehouse here, and very often, uh, you know, at night after 10 p.m., uh, people are loading in amps and drum sets, and often playing here. Yes, a CD Baby live album from the warehouse. That would be cool. I think that would go well. Yeah. Which reminds me, I was searching for an album by Derek Sivers last night on CDBaby.com, and um, you weren't there. <laughs> I started the site just to sell my own CD on my site, like on my band's website. And then I told some of my friends I'd be glad to help them out as well because I had already done all of the work to build a shopping cart and get a credit card merchant account. And back in 1997, that stuff was tough. You know, this is before PayPal, before Amazon, right. before any of that. Uh, I did it all myself. And it was so much work that some of my friends said, oh man, can you sell my CD? So for a while on my band's website, there was a button to buy my CD and then some of my friends. Mm -hmm. And after that section with some of my friends got too big, I took them off and put them on their own website, meaning just to get it off of my website. And so that other website is CD Baby, and that's the one that grew. Um, so I never really sold my own CD on CD Baby. Uh, and I like it that way because uh, shortly after starting the website, the idea of helping all these musicians started fascinating me so much that it really became more important to me than my own music. I didn't really care about, you know, shouting my personal feelings into a public address system under a spotlight anymore. <laughs> I, I just, I wanted to help everybody else make their music. Um, In your opinion, what is the biggest challenge for the indie today? And do you see any solutions? It's calling attention to your music is biggest challenge now. Think of it this way. Uh -huh. um, 20 years ago, it was hard to even record your music. It was really expensive to record your music. You had to go into a really expensive studio, um, you know, pay $10,000 or something like that per just to do a song or two. So with the advent of cheap home recording equipment and Pro Tools and all that, the creation of your music became much easier. Then about eight years ago, with things like CD Baby, Amazon, MP3.com, and more recently, iTunes, the distribution of your music is now taken care of. Right. So the creation of the music 20 years ago, the, the distribution of your music eight years ago, these things have been solved. And so the big thing that's left is the promotion, um, the how to call attention to it. But unfortunately, that's not something that you can buy an electronic box to fix. Um, that still needs to come from human creativity and empathy and understanding what it's like to be a music fan and understanding what music fans are looking for. And they're not necessarily looking for introspective lyrics and tight harmonies and, and mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a certain rhythm section musician-y aspects. They're looking for a record to buy that to put on while having sex. <laughs> or they're looking for a record to, uh, to stick into their car while going on a long drive mm -hmm. or something to play while dinner when their parents are coming over next week. People have needs for music and it's hard as a musician to understand how you fit 
into that world of why people buy music and how to appeal to them on that level. Uh, it's a really hard thing to do. Uh, so I think that's the what every musician needs these days is more promotion, more marketing. But unfortunately, it's just not something that they can press a button and fix. Um, there's still a feeling among indies of us and them. In your opinion, who is the biggest bad guy in the business, music business today? And is or is there anything that still frustrates you about the system? It's not a guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a girl. Uh, Honestly, okay, I'm going to give an unusual answer. I really think the artist's biggest enemy at this point is their own mindset. With the right, I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. Okay. I met an artist recently um, named Barry Coral. A friend of hers was a publicist. She was doing a tour of the U.S. And ordinarily, if a publicist takes on an independent artist client, they think in terms of small, independent, like, oh, well, she's unknown, she's not anybody, we'll just kind of maybe submit her to some calendar listings. And then if they do actually get a feature-length story, they make such a point of saying that she's an independent artist, that she's unsigned, that she's not on a label. And if you think about it from the public's point of view, they really don't care. They don't care if you, what label. I mean, you can say that you're on Crunchy Frog Records, you know? It's like mm -hmm. they don't know that that's not a big... Like, nobody cares about what label you're on. Your own label out of your living room is just as much a label as any other label, so why act like it's oh so different?